Hey, how's it going? What you're witnessing in front of you right now is the miraculous act of CodeCAD. That is uh, a CAD model forming in front of you with nothing more than lines of code. Now, what exactly is this shape forming? Well, you'll have to wait until the end to see. Uh, but in the meantime, I thought this would be a great opportunity to give a bit of an update on what I've been working on. So what have I been working on? Well, I have been trying to, in a somewhat shotgun scatter approach, doing my best to push the paradigm of CodeCAD forward. So uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with my work. So some of the stuff I've done in the past is I have a open SCAD related library that kind of focuses on, well, I think it's a really pragmatic approach uh, to developing open SCAD parts, but it kind of focuses on uh, helping you add fillets, which is something that's somewhat traditionally hard to do with open SCAD as well as some of the videos that are already on this channel are open SCAD related. However, more recently I've been working on things a bit more broadly in the code CAD area slash space. So one of those things is a repo I've got up called Curated Code CAD, which is nothing more than just a list of all the code CAD packages that I know of. And this is one thing that I find really sort of encouraging for this area in general is just how many they are. I think last time I counted there were over 16. And I think it's, I think it speaks to a really deep love that a lot of developers in particular, but not only developers, really like this uh, method of cutting by, by code. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really great. Further in that respect, I've also to try and find the differences and the commonalities between a lot of these packages. I've tried to experiment with a number of them by making the same part. So I've made this birdhouse multiple times in a number of different packages, specifically in OpenSCAD, in Cascade Studio, in CAD Query, in JSCAD, and as well as in FreeCAD, which is a bit of a special case because uh, it's more of a traditional CAD package, but it does have uh, Python programming within it. And I've also had um, some co the same birdhouse donated to me. So uh, again, in a package called SDFX by the author of that library, Jason Harris, as well as the author of DeclareCAD, whose tag I can't pronounce. So I'll make sure to pop that up on screen. So yeah, I mean, that's a good way to just kind of compare the style between them. But probably the most significant thing I've been working on is my own platform called CAD Hub. And this project integrates heavily with a, well, first I should explain what it is. CAD Hub just aims to be a community hub for the CodeCAD community. Because at the moment, it feels, I mean, it's just my sense, it feels a little uh, disjointed. So CAD Hub integrates with another project called Cascade Studio, which is a fantastic project. Uh, it's by a gentleman by the name of um, Jonathan Selsted. I might be, be pronouncing that wrong. And... There was a pr very pragmatic reason for choosing this one because I want to integrate more of these CodeCAD packages, but uh, Cascade Studio is A, fantastic, and B, really pragmatic from the sense that it runs in the browser. So uh, what it is, it's an abstraction upon Open Cascade, which is a mature C++ CAD library that's been able to be converted to WASM uh, or WebAssembly, which is this uh, binary-like technology for compiling other languages, not all languages, but C++ is definitely on the list, compiling them to this binary-like format so they can run in the browser. So Cascade Studio adds some abstraction on top of that to make the CodeCAD experience quite nice. You know, the stuff that we're all used to, you know, cubes and spheres. But yeah, it uses this really battle-tested, mature CAD library. But besides it just running in the browser, I'm really quite bullish on Cascade Studio. For, there, there's two reasons, and they, they're kind of subtle, but I, I think they're important for not um, hamstringing the project long term. There's one thing is I think that uh, if you're going to develop you know, software like this, it's good to kind of meet immediate needs, and probably most of the initial users are going to be uh, sort of 3D printing enthusiasts, and that's, that's cool, but it would, I think it's good to cater towards and to kind of have in mind, it would be good if someone can use this in a professional sense later down the track. There are two things that Cascade Studio has that I think will help help it live a long life, even in a professional sense. And they're subtle. One of them is the fact that it's using a BREP kernel under, under the hood, so that's boundary representation, which is a bit more of a pure way of representing 3D shapes over, say, mesh, a mesh kernel, which is somewhat common. 
a bit of an analogy for mesh versus BREP is a bit like plotting a curve from a series of points versus just having the mathematical equation for that line. And the reason why this is important is that it allows uh, step files to be exported, which is an industry standard and will be insisted upon depending on what you're trying to do. So one example would be injection molding. And that's a bit of a problem if you ever want to, uh, to advance beyond just 3D printing and then suddenly the, the format you've been using just isn't, or the, the package you've been using just isn't compatible with something that is demanded. So that's a good thing. And two, it also has some fillet support. And again, fillets, uh, I, I think it's, on one hand, oh, it's not that important, just a little bit of rounding. But on the other hand, they are vital for reducing stress concentrations. And it's the kind of thing that I just, that I just know. There are certain professionals who just won't even consider these kind of packages if there's no fillet support because it's just, it's just such a basic feature. Here's a terrible analogy. Fillets in CAD software is a bit like if you went to order some fries and you asked for extra salt and they told you that we don't do salt. Anyway, Cascade Studio has both those things. So yeah, it's really, it's, it's a really quite nice package. And the fact that it can run in the browser is great. And it's particularly, it's really good for like what I'm trying to do with CAD Hub in the sense that it allows folks to share their projects in a really interactable way in the sense that you, you can put your project up on CAD Hub and then someone can have a look at it and immediately start tinkering with it in the browser if they like it but wanna, you know, see what's going on or, or make some changes. Well, this, uh, this time lapse is just about up, so I'll wrap it up. If you wanna support my work, probably the best way to do that is just to stay up to date with what I'm doing as well as help spread the word. So uh, definitely sign up to CAD Hub. Definitely check out Cascade Studio. I also have a newsletter you can sign up to. You can subscribe here on YouTube. And if you know anyone who might be interested in this kind of thing, please let them know too. Okay, cheers folks, bye. Oh, I almost forgot. The time-lapse is of a laptop stand that has ports integrated into it, which I'll have a short video on soon, so stay tuned.